feel way better today. I woke up at 8.30, whereas all the other days I've been waking up at 11, and I've been taking a lot of naps, drinking a lot of water, so I feel about 95% today, so it feels really good. Right now I'm at the vet. I'm bringing meatloaf in to get checked up because uh, we just adopted him yesterday, so we want to get a checkup just to see and uh, make sure everything is good, everything's okay with them. But earlier, um, since I don't really know him that well, uh, we needed to take his temperature, and they put a thermometer in his butt, and uh, the vet tech told me to hold on to him and hold the face away from him so he doesn't bite him. And then uh, he was like, make sure he doesn't bite him. I'm like, well, I don't know if he's gonna bite or not because I've only had him for a day, I don't really know him. So um, one really cute thing I found out about him is um, I was like, fuck it, I, I'm his dad, I gotta hold on to him. If he bites, he bites. So I hold on to him while petting him and you know trying to console him. And while the vet tech was uh, taking his thermometer, I mean not his thermometer, taking his temperature by putting the thermometer up his butt, um, Meatloaf didn't really like it. But instead of like growling and showing his teeth like, I don't wanna fucking bite your ass, like what Tyson would have done, he actually showed his teeth and I got scared, but then he would just whine, like, I don't wanna, don't do that, don't do that, it doesn't feel good. So I think he's a big softy, he has a big heart, he looks huge and he looks very intimidating, but he's just a big softy and um, it was cool that through that circumstance of getting anally probed, I was able to find out new things about him. So um, because of that, they had to take him to the back and get a couple of vet techs to come out and uh, help take the temperature because they weren't able to. He was just squirming around way too much and uh, I don't think he, he really liked it. So right now we got Fawn here just hanging out by herself. This is where Fawn actually came to get checked up where um, she had the little rash on the back. So we have to put the cone on so that she doesn't keep biting it and so that we can let it dry and heal completely. So I'm just kind of waiting here and waiting for uh, Meatloaf to be brought in. I'm hoping that he's completely healthy and uh, we can go home fast because uh, I also have some pretty important things to do today and one is a really big step and I'll tell you guys later but we got a really big step going on Barbell Brigade today so I'm really excited about that but I have to take my kids in to get checked up first so we'll see uh, how that turns out. Oh fuck, so I am all fucked up right now. I have a bloody nose that I don't have tissue for so I'm trying to tilt my head back while sniffling here and there so I don't bleed all over my shirt. But uh, Meatloaf had a great physical, which is awesome. The doctor uh, checked his abdomen, checked his heart, his breathing, his respiratory system, and his uh, eardrums, his ear canal, everything checked out really good. So he's uh, pretty much very healthy. And uh, that's just all the preliminary stuff that you would uh, get a physical for even if you're a human being. However, I did bring up the limp that he's been having and I asked him or asked her, the doctor, about it and she was saying that uh, after she further examined the limp problem, he does have a swollen front forearm and his paw is like placed kind of like towed out a little bit. So uh, she's thinking that he either suffered trauma before or he has like elbow dysplasia. And I'm thinking, since the story that we heard, which was uh, that Meatloaf and his brother killed a dog, either one, during the killing of the dog, they got into a big ass fight, so he also got hurt. Or two, after the dog was killed, the owner came out and got fucking pissed and beat the fuck out of Meatloaf, which also explains the reason why he's scared all the time when every time I raise something above his head. So whatever the case it is, I'm hoping that it's not an innate problem. Well, I mean, it would actually be better if it was an innate problem, but I'm hoping it is and it's just temporary and it's because he suffered some trauma due to the horrific incident that just happened. So uh, what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna take him home and uh, watch him for like a week before uh, making my next decision because uh, the doctor was saying that to get a full examination, they would have to sedate him because he's so fucking huge sedate them and then um, then they can do x-rays and do a full-on orthopedic exam but um, right now I'm not thinking that's necessary because I'm just thinking it's just because he got into a big fight you know like anytime anybody even boxers if they get into a big ass fight there's bound to be some trauma oh cool, I think my nose stopped bleeding there's bound to be some trauma 
and I'm just hoping that it's just something he can walk it off, you know, quote unquote. And the reason why I feel like he can is because he uh, he's been playing. He's able to jump over like little fences. He's able to run and stuff here and there. So he doesn't seem like he's dealing with a medical problem or a medical issue. It just seems like he probably has some trauma here and there. So I'll pay I'll pay uh, close attention to him just to make sure everything is cool. But uh, now I'm driving to the new JK office, and uh, one of the things I wanted to tell you guys earlier that I was saying is pretty fucking uh, important today is we're conducting interviews for a new hiring process for Barbell Brigade Apparel. So we're really trying to go legit and we're hiring a fashion designer now because all the ideas that we have because of the limited fashion background that me, Gio, and Aaron have, it can only go so much. Like we have visions, but we don't have the know-how to make it come true. So for example, like you can have a vision of a jacket, but then you also need someone that knows how to draw like CAD files. CAD files are like, okay, after you have the creative drawing, then they know how to send that to the factory and they know exactly, okay, it's a eighth inch hem here. This is the brand of zippers I want. This is how much the taper of the sleeves are so it fits the shoulder and it goes all the way down to the wrist. Like those are the exact measurements that a fashion designer would know how to do. And so uh, we're really trying to take Barbell Brigade Apparel to the next level. So we're hiring a legit fashion designer. So we're conducting interviews. And uh, a lot of the people that have applied, they've actually worked for like Nike, Billabong, Hurley. So some pretty big name companies. So we're really excited to see. Well, I'm excited actually because I'm actually out of the loop because I'm not in charge of Barbell Brigade Apparel, the design process. I've, uh, I've been taking care of like all the gym stuff, but I did want to be included in this interview just so I can see like who's coming into my company. So um, I'm pretty excited to see who they chose. And I believe there's one interview today, one or two interviews today, and then one or two interviews in a week. So I'm really, really excited because I feel like this is really the, the next step. I feel like without hiring legit people and you're just doing t-shirts or you're just doing white label products, or you do do like a few basic cut and sew designs, you're always gonna stay a mom and pop shop, you know? But like later on, if you want to be able to make a laptop sleeve that matches with the duffel bag, that also match with like a custom Barbell Brigade pillow or Barbell Brigade tents, like wherever we want to venture off to, we need legit people. And so I think as a business owner, it's very important to understand what your weaknesses are and to hire strengths in those weaknesses. So that's what I'm going now. and both are very, very highly skilled and have been doing fashion illustration slash design for like at least a decade each one. Um, and they were both really cool. They were both... <coughs> God damn, what's both, going on? They were both very personable. They were both very real. Um, I, did, I never really felt like they were giving me, I mean, there were parts here and there where I f like, but I never, the overall feeling was never that they were trying to um, give me the answers that I wanted to hear. They, they, they would decline certain things or they would say, hey, I don't really like to do this, but if you need me to, then I will do it. So um, I really like both of them. They both had a very cool vibe. One was um, a little bit older than the other. Uh, she had a family. She has like three kids, oldest one being like 26, but she still had a very young hip vibe, not in terms of like, you know, appearance, but in terms of just the industry. So she, she seemed very promising. She seemed very stable. And then the other one was much younger. She was super hip, super trendy. Like she was wearing like a red jumpsuit, really cute girl. Um, and I feel like they both bring different elements to the table, like different vibes. And it's kind of a tough choice because they're both really great. And I feel like at this point, it's just going to come down to money. <laughs> and this is just money that um, uh, we're always like, fuck. It's always, it always comes down to money because, yeah, like we just have to be very strategic in how 
we move we move this money around so that it can it can um, help us expand and grow the way we want to grow. So they're both cool. Uh, we have one more interview, so I can't really say much until I see the last person, and then I'll really think about it and, and see who I ultimately want to go with. So you feel like there's a future in barbell for both of them if money wasn't the issue? Um, yeah, I feel like I would honestly, if I if money was not an issue, I would hire both. That's true. That's probably what I would do too. Yeah, I would hire both, and I would say, cool, this is your team. Um, start Monday. But they both. Uh, they both specialize in different areas. Yeah, they both kill it actually in different areas. And and both areas are very synergistic. So That's very true. Yeah. Like Jill said, the interviews went very well. If we had the money, we would just hire both cuz they both specialize in different things and they both kill it. But because we don't, we really have to make a uh, intelligent business decision to see which one best fits our company and which one are we gonna get the most out of our pay or salary in and, uh, and, and really figure out which one of their specialties is the most important to us at this very moment. So we got some serious thinking. But on the JK News side, we got some more improvements that I'm looking at and I can't wait to show you this because it is like, oh my God, I can't believe this is fucking happening and I'm looking at it right now and I don't know if you guys can see well of course you guys can't see because you're not looking over here but oh my no, I'm, just I'm not gonna tease you guys anymore but it's it's there it's it's happening it's crazy it's, it's mind-blowing but the first thing I want to show you guys is this dun, 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 dun. look at this we got our vanity mirror in this is custom made look at the welds on this motherfucker damn they welded it and sanded it custom made vanity mirror and they put uh, light bulbs in each one of those holes and uh, this is where we're gonna sit down and if we're gonna do makeup or whatever if the girls gotta get pretty they can easily get pretty here like professionals and even has wheels homie with the motherfucking wheels so what I really wanted to show you though is this this part is the part that I'm like, oh my God. Like when I first stepped in here, I walked in, I literally stopped and I'm like, what in the world is this really happening? So from the last vlog, you saw them bringing in the parts to build the JK new set, right? And so we saw parts, emphasis on parts. It was leaning up against the wall cause they motherfucking parts. But look at this, bam. What in the motherfucking world is that? Is that cubby holes? Nope. Is that tic-tac-toe boxes? Nope. That shit is the outside wall to the JK News set. Can you believe this? Look, I'm going to bring you guys around. So it's not done yet. So don't go judging me. Don't go fucking judging me because it ain't done yet. But you guys ready? This is going to be crazy. This is going to be crazy because uh, it's one step closer to fruition bam look at that a motherfucking set can you believe this just kidding news we got our custom made newscaster desk in the same setup as our current so we don't really have to change the show format but we had it opened up so now we can set our cameras on the floor here we're gonna put markers on the floor so the cameras can shoot diagonally now up here we're gonna hang lights so if it looks kind of dim right now don't trip we're gonna have legit lights up there, shining on the cast, on the walls, everything. So it's gonna look nicely lit. Did I just say nicely? Nicely lit. And then uh, behind these fake ass windows for the set, we're gonna have a cityscape like every other talk show does. And then there's gonna be lights in the back too. Can you believe this? We are in the new JK News set. We are in this motherfucker, dude. A real, a real Hollywood set. But for JK, a real JK Hollywood set. Can you believe this is crazy? You know, when, when they tell you, dude, dreams come true, just work hard. Like when, when I was a kid, I was like, man, that's my fucking bullshit, dude. You telling me I'm gonna go in the NBA? Come on. But now I'm gonna tell you kids the same shit. If you work hard, dreams do come true. And you guys seen it, man. Like if you guys been following us, since 2007, since when me and Joe used to do Uncle Sam, Uncle Chin, Korean History Channel, 
and you saw that bootleg ass camera that we used to film on it was five megapixels you know and then we went through uh danny door director james oda now we have case we've been riding with them for a long time we've been building our crew out and it's just slowly like don't dream dream big but don't worry about the steps just do every next step that's important to you and ultimately the castle will be built you know i think so many people they look at the castle and they go or they do dream big and they look at the castle go, yo i want a castle but they look at it and they're like how the fuck am i gonna get a million bricks in that motherfucker and they end up not doing it and they give up on it when i think the people that do make their dreams come true they go yo i want a castle let me find a brick and they find one brick they put it there they find another brick they put it there and eventually they have a big fucking castle and that's evident in this motherfucker when we first started JK Films, we had no idea we we're gonna build a Hollywood motherfucker set in this mother. I would be proud to be like, yo, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, you wanna come to JK News? Cause we got a legit motherfucking set. I'd be proud for them to come down. Back at the old Monterey Park office, I'd be like, fuck no, you guys ain't coming out. It's just too bootleg for you guys. I don't wanna waste y'all's time, but this is for reals. And now, with that knowledge we learned, we're, we're applying that to Barbell Brigade as well. So. We need, you know, we need a fashion designer. We, it, it's, it's about that time. We just, we ran out of know-how in, in the fashion world. We need to bring experts in now. And then what do we do? Save up money, and now we're gonna hire a motherfucker. So remember, castles are built a brick at a time. But don't worry about how many bricks. Just do it. Just fucking do it. Nike. Let me show you guys what goes on behind uh, these sets too. It's crazy. So we got this freaking big ass wood frame. We got the truss system to attach lights and sound. And in the back, it looks like this. See, that's the window. We're gonna put lights back there so it's well lit. This is what a legit Hollywood set looks like, guys. This is the back of what Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, all those Jimmys, any talk show that you would watch, the back of their sets would look like that because we got legit Hollywood people to build this shit. We didn't order no motherfucking cheap ass Chinese contractor. Everything that we've done with the new JK office, admin side and set side, we really went legit and um, we didn't go half ass. We didn't go do it yourself. We went legit because we knew that now for us to grow, we have to get people that are better and smarter than us to help make our vision come alive. Man. Bam! It's evident. It's motherfucking evident is motherfucking motherfucker. I thought you were going to take a shower. <laughs> this blanket smells funny. Why are you all up in the blankets if you're going to take a shower? Because I like to season my blankets. You know one thing I never realized about you is you always take double breaks. How come you always take double breaks? I like to chill. But why? It doesn't make sense. So for example, like if I'm tired and I get home, I immediately try to shower so I can get in bed and I can be in bed by like 11.30 or something. I'm like, cause I'm tired. For you, you go and you, you lay in bed, you don't even get ready. And then it's 11.30 and you're just chilling. And then finally you get out of bed at like 12. And then now you go brush your teeth and then, and then you get ready for bed. And finally you go to sleep at like one. That's so cute. But it defeats the purpose cause if you're tired, you need to sleep. And now you just prolonged everything by like an hour. Why do you chill when, why do you take double breaks when you can just hurry up and do what you got to do and then that way you could just knock out for way longer and you earn yourself two more hours of sleep? It doesn't work like that. I want to be in the moment with you. So I sacrifice all that stuff so I could be with you and by the time it's 10 you go to sleep and then I just continue with my day. No, my moment is getting ready. As soon as I get home... I don't just jump on the bed and just chill out. I don't know why. Or jump on the couch, because I'm tired. You're missing out. So I want to get in the bed and then actually rest and recover. So that's what you wanted to ask me? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Oh. It just came to your mind and you just wanted to ask me this? Yeah. Why? I'm just kidding. But How do you think, um, how do you think... Meatloaf? Meatloaf is doing so far. Mm. Is he accustomed to our new family yet? Mm -mm. I think it's gonna take like 
at least at least a month until he's like comfortable but I think it could be accelerated if we spent all day with him the way we did today he sat through two interviews that's pretty crazy I bet he never sat through a job interview before I bet he hasn't on the hiring end too uh, what else hasn't he done I don't know I feel like he hasn't done anything he walks so well on a leash, though. Yeah, he does great. Like, he, he understands commands really well. Yeah. Like, he doesn't pull on the leash, and as soon as you pull back, he's like, oh, my bad. He's freaking huge, though. <clears throat> That's one thing I can't get over. I'm like, damn, this guy's fucking huge. For Every the longest time, I felt really bad for you because I know you like big dogs, and Fawn and Brig, unfortunately, aren't big. Fawn's pretty big. Mm -hmm. I always thought Fawn was pretty it big. Didn't, she didn't fit you. Really? Yeah. Oh. She fits me. How so? We're sleek, slender. <laughs> Dumb. <laughs> I really like how athletic Fawn is. I love that. Like, even when she jumps, she can't help, 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 like, the spring in her step. So she's always, like, bouncy. She's like a little grasshopper. Yeah, she got <clears> mad hops. <throat> like, she can't help the, the, the spring coil. What is it called? Springs? In yeah. her legs. Yeah. She's like, boing, 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 boing. She's cute. She's very cute. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. I think I'm going to go to bed. Are you tired? Yeah. I wish you would come in here. I will. I'm going to get ready for bed. And I'm going to brush my teeth. And take my contacts out. And then so by the time I get in there, I'm in there for good. I'm not going to go in there halfway and have to get back out. Because mm. it's way too comfortable. So I don't even know why, why would you put yourself through this torture of being so freaking comfortable in here where, to the point where you can go to sleep and then you get back out. What's the point of that? Good night. Oh, so now you're not even going to brush your teeth. Bye. You contacts in your eyes. I know. You didn't even take a shower, so you're all nasty because you worked out this morning. I know. I'm so gross. Why do you put yourself through this torment? Because you asked me, because you said, hey, I want to ask you a question. And then the fan's on. It had dog hair on my clothes. So I said, oh, let me take off this dog fur clothes. Took it off. I'm like, ooh, it's chilly because the fan is on. Well, got to get underneath the covers. You didn't even have to take your clothes off. I did. It was you were standing fun. like right there. You could have stayed standing in the clothes you had on. That's not fun. I didn't say come here. I didn't say anything. I was just like, oh. I, I didn't want you to you, zoom because uh, the zoom is so Meatloaf. loud on this camera. No, I was going to ask you about Milo to see how he was doing. Mm. I just, I wanted to give you clean audio. Yeah, right. You think Meatloaf would come in here? No. No, huh? Funny would. Funny! Funny! Fun! Come here, Fun! Come here, Funny! Good. Girl, baby. Hi, Fawn. Alright, time to go to sleep, okay, Fawn? Oh, Milo. Oh, hi, hey, baby. Milo. <laughs> he left. Guardian, aka Tyson. <laughs> hey, pretty boy. Yeah, he's 100 pounds. They're very gentle in his 100 pounds. Hi, baby. I was here last time. She, can't wait. she loves dogs. This is like humans. She loves dogs. Yeah. 